in with stuff, guys. The card that everyone believes to be the worst card in Clash Royale has actually achieved the impossible. The Barbarian Hut just got to rank number five in the world. Top players joke about it, saying it spawns no value and is a waste of six elixir. And Royal API rounds down the usage rate at top ladder all the way down to 0%. But there is one warrior standing above the rest, still spawning barbarians on all the top players' doorsteps. With this Royal Recruits Royal Hogs deck, you've got immense fireball bait. The Flying Machine, the Zappies, the Royal Hogs, and the Barb Hut. It's actually one of the best defensive buildings you could ask for against Golem, Electro Giant, or any type of big beatdown deck. And other recruit decks can get dominated by those matchups, but not this deck. With Zappies, Barb Hut, and Royal Recruits, you're gonna have a trifecta of defense. It's satisfying seeing one of the worst cards in Clash Royale still being able to destroy the best players in the game. It's time for the Barb Hut to put anyone that dares attack us to shame and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using credit code start tag to make all the daily videos possible. Yo, this guy finished 389 in the world, and he demands our full Full focus. So you guys already know. Full Elixir Bank in the back. Dropping our recruits. <laughs> when you're given the opportunity, you got to go for it. And the guy's going to have Baby Dragon. So that's four Elixir down the drain. We dropped seven. He is up three. He should be cycling something any second. Why are you not dropping stuff, my dude? Okay, he is leaking a little bit of Elixir. And then he's going to drop a Dark Prince. I think when you cycle the regular recruits at the start, you don't want to go head over heels and dedicate too much Elixir to them. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they're flashy. Yeah, they might be your favorite card, like one of my favorite cards in Clash. But you can't waste your elixir on them because they're not going to give you that big of a dividend. The evolved ones are what really pack the punch. So I say that all the time. I just want to make sure you guys don't overcommit. Because if you did, it would be really bad. Like, what, what do I do against the golem then? Oh my God. I'm already down at a pretty big deficit because I'm going Royal Hogs on the other side. But I think it would be an unsalvageable situation. It still might be tough. The way I see it is I might have to go for recruits and then have to go arrows afterward. And I don't know if we can even kill those Night Witch Bats. That's the problem that I'm seeing right now. Look at those Night Witch Bats, bro. They're just popping off. Oh, the Electro Sphere, though. That was incredible. I got very lucky with the timing. I was like, if we can soak up some of the bat shots, I got super greedy. And <laughs> it's almost about to die. And it worked out wonderfully. Okay, so looking back at the game. Guy's going to have Mega Minion. It's going to be out of cycle. We can go for Rail Hogs to go and pull that back. Oh, is this even smart, though? Because if we pull that back, then he goes Dark Prince, right? Yeah, and then we have to go Zappies on the Dark Prince. And then I guess we can get a lot of damage here. We want to use the Recruits, but we don't have the Evolution with them. Anyway, we're going to drop our Zappies here. So then they're going to stutter and stagger their stuns. That's nice. I think that we're going to maximize our potential here. So the Dark Prince doesn't get another shot. And then we go our Recruits at the River. And we're going to stagger all of them off on the left because we want to take that tower when he doesn't have Dark Prince in cycle. That was my game plan. I don't know if it's smart. We're going to find out. <laughs> we are in our laboratory and we are cooking up some damage. Okay, I'm going to go Barbot. And if the Barbot allows us to defend this, then it is significantly stronger than I expected. Because Golem is always a struggle with this deck. When you're playing Royal Hogs, Royal Recruits into Golem, it's not fun because... The Goblin Cage just doesn't have enough defense 90% of, of the time. I was going to say 9% of the time. I was like, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, Jake. All right. Do we have to do anything here? Are we okay? Are we maybe going to defend against a top ladder player? Please let me win this. Wait, we can go for an Electro Spirit to stun and reset the Electro Dragon? How does it feel, Electro Dragon? Getting a taste of your own medicine, man. No way. We just beat one of the better players in Clash Royale because of the bar butt. We wouldn't have been able to defend that with Goblin Cage, and there is no shot that I was even expecting to be able to salvage that situation. GG, well played, and it's cool to see the bar putt popping off. Truthfully, I thought it was going to be trash, but it totally trashed that Golem deck. So sweeping into a game against a top 400 player, he's from the Weeping Cherry Clan, so maybe we can weep him a little bit harder when he drops a Goblin Gang directly into Electric Spirit, and then he sees Rail Recruits at the river. Oh no! I thought it was going to be Log Bait! I was already ready. I was like, yo, guys, we're going to make him cry. We're chilling. We got an amazing matchup. And now we matched our way into Three Musketeers, which is one of the more difficult matchups for our deck. Because if you think about it, we don't have Fireball. So we have to find a way to win. I'm going to eat all the Musketeer damage on the left-hand side, and then I'm going to eat a ton on the right, too. Man, that is a lot of value for our guy. We'll see if he's going to have Fireball. If he's got Fireball, my tower's already dead. I will stay alive with the bar part, guys. Trust me right now. We got this game. Maybe. Possibly. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. The Electric Spirit's going to be able to chain onto the tower and put the minions into the danger zone against the rest of the fly machine. So that's good. If you didn't know, Electric Spirit, 
plus one fly machine hit. One shots minions. Really good interaction, as you guys saw right there. Oh, I thought he would drop it like inside tile. He just dropped in the safe spot. Interesting. I think the miner dies, so that's good. Something good for us. <laughs> he could three musketeers though. That's uh, that's gonna be the problem. He threw musketeers at all. Like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, okay. We can do this, and we can go royal hogs. Because now you don't even kill the zappy. Wait, if you go uh, minion horde, we have arrows. Yes, we got him to do it. That's what I'm talking about. If I got caught in a cycle where he had three musketeers, I was dead. But because we kept him at a low amount of elixir, he had to go for the minion horde. And I knew he was going to do it. I was hovering my arrows, and we got him. There's nothing more satisfying than that. Being in a predicament where you should never be able to come back, and then having the double small spells, it's, it's a brilliant thing. Oh, that's not good. All right, well, I think we can do this, and hopefully it works out. I mean, the guy's got miners, so... Yeah, how are we going to do this? What is the strategy here? He's dropping all of his musketeers in one side. What if... Wait, that's just a zap. I think it was a zap. <laughs> all right, we can recruit. Use the evolution. Have the fly machine maybe do enough damage. That's the strategy here, guys. It's going to be a little bit more simple. Just spam everything that we have and pray that it works. <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> Bar barrel and recruits can kill the musketeers. Wait, the recruits? Seriously, want us that interaction? They're going to lock onto the tower too? Let's go. Wait, the three crown though. The three crown, it might be possible. It looks like a meme right now, but I'm just telling you, don't discount it, my dudes. Don't discount it till it's actually not possible anymore. <laughs> All right, we can go arrows. Not because I want to, because I need to. Need to kill those barbarians. Kill the musketeer a little bit faster. Oh, I can't spam into him because now he's going to go minion horde. All right, let's go barb hut. Barb hut, you're such a safe... Oh, I was going to say such a safe space, but not really anymore. All right, right into the death squad, right into the uh, <laughs> the firing squad, if you will. We do have the recruits again, though. I wonder, how is this going to work? Let's go for recruits, and then go in for our Electro Spirit, and chain onto the Battle Ram, and see if we can bar barrel. I think as long as the recruits just have enough health, this might not be a healthy situation for our guy. Wait, he really is going to cry. He's got to go in for a minion horde. It's not going to work out. We can easily arrows on top of the Elixir Collector and the Musketeers, put ourselves in a winning position, and somehow, some way, we bounced back. Dominating another top ladder dude at the end when it seemed like it was absolutely over. Such a fun match, and it's cool to play card combinations that opponents don't predict. Way too often will opponents expect a Fireball plus Barbrill, and when they get hit up with the arrows, they're going to get pierced all the way down to the point they can't ever recover. Hey, we're going to give me his Hesa. What's up, dude? We're going to drop a good luck here and see what he's cooking. Definitely want to go in for our recruits in the back first play. If you go recruits in the back, not only is it going to scare your opponent senseless, but it'll get you the evolution a little bit faster. And obviously, if you're lucky enough to get them in your starting hand and you've got Barb Hut to defend and Zappies to defend, you're going to be safe cycling at the start. So I'm going to go in for our Zappies here. I, I wonder what our opponent's going to have. Probably Balloon, right? Musketeer, Skeletons, and Bats. Screams Balloon at me, especially when we see the Valkyrie. So there's a chance it's going to be some minor poison deck or minor mortar deck, but it's very unlikely. Oh, it is a mortar deck. I just I said it was unlikely. He decided to deliver on it. Okay, let's get an Electric Spirit down, chain onto the mortar, stop the Musketeer from getting another hit on top of our Fly Machine, and then potentially go for Royal Hawks because the Valkyrie's out of cycle. So if he's got Fireball, he's going to drop it right now. But if he doesn't, oh my gosh, guys, the Fly Machine is going to force out a Snowball and Bats from our opponent. Meanwhile, melting the Musketeer into one health zone. That is awesome stuff. Obviously, being able to prevent our opponent from getting any good counter push with that Musketeer is what we need to see. Because otherwise, I think that the Musketeer would kill the Zappies and then lock onto my tower and make my life miserable. So, good. You know, we vibe with that. Obviously, our opponent's going to end up having the Mortar Evolution, so I do have to be wary of that. If he ended up having the Knight, then we wouldn't have to be worried about it. But since he's got Valkyrie, what other card could be evolved in his deck? So, I want to go for the Evolution as soon as we can, just because we're going to get more value. More Evolved cards equals more positive Elixir trades equals a higher chance of winning in Clash Royale. It's a simple mathematic sequence. So, we're going to get the Recruits down on the left-hand side, and I think with no Musketeer, he's going to have to go Bats. So we can make a prediction with the Electro Spirit on top of the Bats. Actually, let's Fly Machine to go and snipe the Musketeer, and then when he goes Bats, we Electro Spirit. We don't even have to make a prediction. He's going to have to do it. There's no other play. This is like, it's inevitable. There it is. It's not even a prediction because it was such an easy play. Uh, we, we can't count it as a prediction. <laughs> the only thing he had in his book. All right, so we can go in for a Barbarian Hut in the back, just because we want to flow Barbarians on that side, and then continuously punish on the right as well when he decides to go for his Valkyrie, because that's the tower that's lower HP. So I think he's going to Valkyrie there. It would make sense for him to Valkyrie there. 
Maybe he doesn't want to make sense. Maybe he wants to make me confused. I'll we'll have to wait and see. Cycling Scally's in the back. He's going to poison. All right, let's go for recruits just barely outside of the poison. To give our opponent a little bit more torture. And then say, hey, you can't ever hit my fly machine. And if you decide to go for bats on the other side, well, we have Electric Spear for them again. The good thing about this deck is we have an endless swarm of little mini tanks like the Bard Barrels and then also the Barbarians flowing. So we can constantly keep that fly machine alive to torture our opponent. And then if he's going to go and try to decide to like outcycle us, we go for our Zappies and we make that type of play saying you can't. You can't ever go for the bats on top of the fly machine. <laughs> if you want to, you're going to spend a lot of extra elixir to make that happen. All right, we can finally go for our Electric Spirit to clean up the bats and then still have more Royal Recruits coming through. And last time he decided to go for bats, he ended up getting some decent value, but this time we're going to have arrows. So I think we're going to be able to hit the bats and then also hit the Valkyrie. So it should be a good play for us cleaning that up. Maybe the Fly Machine gets damaged. Nah, no Valkyrie in cycle. So I guess we can just go for pigs. We don't even have to care that much. Piggies for the win. Wait, is the pig going to take the mortar shot too? I think it does. That's brilliant. So then uh, his mortar just hits nothing. <laughs> Literally missing the entire time. That's brilliant. Okay, so the Musketeer will give him one hit on our tower, I think. Oh, wow. I thought the Musketeer had just enough health to survive that shot, but I guess not. All right, we go for recruits. We make another play. We make another baller play on top of the bats. We don't need to. We can just fly machine from a safe distance. The recruits on the right-hand side are going to force out the Valkyrie, and then we go for Rail Hogs. So think about it from this perspective. You go Rail Hogs wherever the Valkyrie isn't, and then you just hold the Electric Spirit for your opponent's bats, and then the Fly Machine will eventually just dig your opponent's grave because there's nothing they can do to stop the Ceiling Fan from slapping their tower. Especially when the Valkyrie is just like nonchalantly chilling on the other side trying to kill the Rail Hogs. You never get enough tank value to soak up the shots from the Fly Machine. Cruising up on a win streak to 7,800 in the world. We got a game against someone that's got Addicted and Chill in the clan. I feel like those things are in stark contrast. If you're addicted, you're probably not going to stop or chill ever. And we're not chilling either because we're dropping recruits in the back and the guy's copying our strategy. So neither of us even know the definition of relax. We just recruit. So if we're going to spam as much as we possibly can with recruits, then we're going to see a ton of evolutions just covering the entire battlefield. Obviously, if he's having a similar deck to us, I don't think he's going to be running Barb Hut unless he's just copying from the top player. Sometimes people will do that. They just look at the leaderboards and like, this is the deck I'm going to play. Um, myself being guilty of that as well. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I think that most people deviate a little bit. Like he's running Mother Witch and he's not running Barb Hut. The bad thing about this for him is he has no answer for the pigs and the fly machine locks onto the tower. Here's the thing. Arrows don't counter push. That's three elixir down the drain for our opponent. Not going to give him anything on offense. And if he can't support the fly machine, I could ignore it. I wonder if that's the right play. But if you think about it from this pragmatic point of view, if our opponent goes in for rail recruits, we want to fight near our side of the map, and I don't want to drop my rail recruits first. So looking at my deck, I kind of have to save my barb hut. If I don't save my barb hut for the hogs, I'm not going to be able to counter it. I don't have a fireball in my deck. So I can't cycle my barb hut. I can't cycle my recruits. I pretty much cycle everything else, and especially try to go in for our royal hogs as much as we possibly can. I'm going to go for an Electric Spirit here and then go for Arrows if he decides to drop anything else. He goes in for a Barbell, that's totally fine. We can go for our Fly Machine. We're trying to play a little bit more safe, you know? A little bit more precautionary here. Usually, we are a bit <laughs> addicted to the aggression, but a bit different here when we can keep our Fly Machine alive, separate our pigs so our opponent can't go in for a Fireball. And even if he's able to keep his Fly Machine away from us, we might be able to go for Royal Recruits on our side, so then we're able to defend everything at once. The big thing is trying to make sure that the Recruits don't charge, and when they do, that's the scary thing. <laughs> Because if they get super close to your tower and they're charging like little mini princes, that's where the damage starts to rack up. All right, we can Electric Spirit so the Fly Machine doesn't hit our tower. And I think the Electric Spirit chains onto all the recruits too. Beautiful, baby. So this match has been really serendipitous to see everything working out in our favor. Like that small interaction with the Electric Spirit hitting every card, that doesn't happen every time. Sometimes the Electric Spirit will end up just hitting one thing. And you're like, oh, wow, the recruits both charge on my tower. I'm kind of screwed now. With 20 seconds remaining, we're just going to go recruit to the river, and there's no chance he breaks through. Even in the face of the Mother Witch, the Barb Hut stands strong. It feels a little bit wrong seeing a card with a, such an abysmal win percentage and win rate played at top ladder and beating its mirror matchup. The guy even hit us up with the angry barbarian emote and a lot of hee hee haws. And we're going to continue to laugh our way up ladder to 8,800 in the world. This guy's got the P.E.K.K.A. banner, and we are ready to permanently distract the P.E.K.K.A. Whether it's with the Barb Hut or the Royal Recruits, I think that the P.E.K.K.A. will be amazed by our maze of cards. So I could go for Royal Hogs first play because I do have Barb Barrel and Electric Spirit. So if he's got Mega Knight, I can actually activate King Tower here. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Okay, so he's going to have Dark Prince. Not a comfortable card for us to rush into, but the splash damage is not dispersed in the way that he would want. Okay, so one thing that I've learned with Zappies, if you stagger them this like this, it's generally a little bit better. Because your Zappies, 
if they hit all at the same time, what happens is the Zappies are not necessarily going to get the maximum amount of stun. But if one hits, you get a stun. Another one hits, you get another stun. And then the third one hits, and you get three separate stuns. That's how you maximize your return of your Zappies. I have learned that the hard way uh, when I play Electro Giant. It is not fun when opponents do that particular placement that I just showcased. So copy that, and you'll be popping off against anyone that's got E-Giant, or I guess even against Dark Princes in that situation. We were able to stun it for a lot longer. So we are going to have the recruits rushing through on the left. We're not even trying to get anything out of this. Like, <laughs> just total transparency. These recruits are destined and born to become failures. The next ones, that's where we get our money's worth. So I can go in for Zappies here on top of the Electro Wizard and show him what real stun is about. We got three of them. He's only got one. I feel like the guy got ripped off and we went to Costco and we we're like, yo, we got way more than you. <laughs> All right, we're going to go for a Royal Hog so then we can also go for a Fly Machine if we want. But generally in this type of situation, when we see our opponent... Okay, I'm considering going Fly Machine a bit earlier so we can go and kill the Dark Prince. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go for an Electro Spirit anyway. So let's just go for a Fly Machine in a more comfortable position. Or do we go Barb Hut? So many different decisions with this deck. That's the cool thing about it. As you never really make the wrong decision as long as you don't do something super stupid. With Recruits and Barb Hut, you're going to have stellar defenses. So by something super stupid, it would be going like Barb Hut directly into that. So then the Executioner is able to hit the Barb Hut and then you feel miserable. Meanwhile, the Barbarians on the right-hand side are going to force that extra Elixir. The strategy here is very simple for us. We go in for the recruits directly on the executioner with the barb barrel to try to kill the executioner so it can't start slaughtering our precious barbarians. Okay, so dueling pressure as well is really good. Because even if our opponent stacks up a ton of stuff, he has to defend the other side too. Oh, he's going to go Elixir Golem. He has no plans on defending that much. Okay, never mind. He ends up dropping 10 Elixir on the right hand side. I immediately proven incorrect. It was still funny to see that, though. I don't think the last time I played against Elixir Gold Pekka, I, I, it's just, I, can't, I can't remember it. I don't know. <laughs> this is extravagant. Wait, we're just going to use that to get his, our Elixir advantage? We can go for recruits here? Oh, I meant to go and pull the Pekka. This could be bad. This could be rather traumatizing for us. Unless we're able to kill the Pekka. I don't know. Are we able to kill the Pekka? Yeah, it looks like we are. Okay, we're cool. We can go for a Fly Machine off to the side. Electro Spirit, and then recruits again. So as long as we can comfortably kill the Exe and slaughter and execute the Executioner, then I know that we can go for Royal Hogs. I want to make sure that I buckled down on defense so I didn't throw the game. That's one of those important things. Like if a P.E.K.K.A. is near your tower and you know that you should be able to defend it, focus on defending it because that thing will munch your tower in like three shots. The GG Inwell played against this dude that ended up having Elixir Golem P.E.K.K.A. And I'm glad we were able to crush such a creative strategy. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day.